so we are live. Um, in about two seconds. I'm using my phone to monitor what's happening. Just, um, okay, so welcome everyone hi hi good afternoon this live stream yes uh, yes we are alive okay so we have one person so far viewing we want to wait a bit and see um what's going on and see how many more persons we can um, get to be a part of this conversation because it's a conversation that much needed that we need to have. And so, yeah. All right, so Yolette, I'm not seeing you. You're, you're not? Yeah, I am now. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Good afternoon again. Yes. Um, today we will be discussing parenting in the pandemic. So we know that normally we have children out in school during the time um, during the day, parents are at work. However, now in the pandemic, uh, most parents are, some parents are working from home, and so some parents are not working and. We have the children at home 24 seven. So I know that parenting come with its challenges and what's not. So we want to welcome you live with Child Link. And we want to say that today we will be discussing parenting in the pandemic. I have with me four beautiful women who are all parents and I will allow them to introduce themselves to you. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. Hannison Cameron here. I'm a mom of two beautiful girls, both um, one is 13 and one is six. It's a joy being here this afternoon to share on how we are coping with COVID-19 so far as parents. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is the Lisa Amsterdam. I am the parent, I'm a single mom of um, two boys. Uh, 13 and almost six as well and um, it comes with its challenges from day to day you know um, you have a teenager and then you have this young energetic full of oh my gosh so much of energy but it's a joy it's a privilege because a lot of um, women now are facing challenges with you know um, um, even with childbearing and infertility and all these other different things. So I count it as a privilege to have my two children and I, I really enjoy it from day to day. Yeah. Yes. Well, hello. Hello there, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Kavita Basad and I am the parent of three beautiful babies. <laughs> Even though that I have one that is 22 years old, I still consider her my baby. All right, I have a 22, I have a 13 year old and I have an eight year old. Now, um, the 22 year old, I mean, she can deal with herself even though I'm, I, I still do parent her. But when it comes to the 13 year old and the, and the eight year old, I have my challenges there. So we'll talk about that later down and um, thank you for being with us. And um, I hope you have a good program. Good afternoon again. I'm Yelet Hines. I'm actually a mother biologically of one, a girl. She's 11, but I'm actually fostering a six-year-old boy now. So I have two children in my home. And yes, as Shakita will have the questions for some of the challenges as we parent and we work from home. I, I feel really excited. I'm excited to share with other parents and also to share as a counselor how it is in this pandemic with the children at home. 
Okay, so thank you for that introduction, ladies. And today, for some reason, I'm very, very excited about this topic because I know there are so many things that we want to talk about. And we want to even welcome parents in the comments to share their views, you know, share your challenges, share your struggles. We're here to give each other support and show that you are not the only one who might have the challenges, but also share your blessings, share the good things, and share, share what works for you and what doesn't. Okay, so once again, welcome. I see we have seven views so far. So we can go ahead and just get started. So I'm gonna kick it off, kick it off with my first question. So I'm going to start here with Kavita, and I'm going to ask you to tell me what parenting was like for you before the pandemic, and if it has changed now that we are in a pandemic. All right. Well, for me, um, parenting before the pandemic was, for me, a little bit more structured. You know, you have school, you have work, and so... Um, during the week you you have a schedule you work with all right and the children at, are at school while you're at work you get your work done you come home and you work with the children um with the pandemic and being at home now with the children um i i don't be every day at home i do at the office and sometimes at home but being at home and doing work and having the children around and having a 13 year old and an eight year old to deal with you know um it's it, it can get hectic it can get confusing we can be you know the house can get rowdy at times you know because um for me is that you you would give them a task to do or you know you have them doing their schoolwork, but at the same time they're not in a school environment you know a school environment will have a structure as well you have everybody in one place and everybody listen to the teacher but as a parent you you would help them with their work you give them a task to do but then you also have your work to do all right and so for me that's a bit of a challenge um getting them to do what they're supposed to do and you have to understand too that they're not in that school environment where they're, you know, they're in a structure, as you can see. All right. So, um, I mean, we've said structure, but they're all together, and uh, I, it could be really, really, really crazy at times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you see, actually, in the background there. <laughs> them that's what i had to do separate them so one the smaller one he's at his grandma so he would call me from whatsapp and so on and then i have Shaquan with me. oh my gosh you see like um Kavita, if I, I can say was saying it was structured where you have school and we go to work and we do whatever it is that we have to do during the day when they're at school and i'm at school on school because I'm, I'm studying right now and then we come back home and we, we do whatever it is that we have to do and we go to bed. The first two weeks, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I was so happy for the break, but the noise, I couldn't stand it. Yeah. I was like, this is, I, I mean, I was so excited because I didn't even, you know, there were some things, I mean, you have your children, but you don't know that. I, I I got to I got my I got to start experiencing things that I didn't even know about them, personal stuff, you know. Um, for some reason, it was it was special to me, and um, but I had to separate them because I couldn't take it because I couldn't even study myself, mm -hmm. and I was really really tired. <laughs> You know, I'm, 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 we're going to work and you're going to school and we're, we're tired, but like I got extra tired. Mm -hmm. So I, I have now we have a plan because we've been home for so long. We have a plan. So what would happen? The baby would come on weekends and he would stay and then he has to, he would go back. I send him back because 
I, I still I'm, I'm studying, like I said, so I would need the time for myself. So he's at his grandma and I'm, I'm here with Shaquan because I can deal with Shaquan because Shaquan can manage himself. You know, he can do stuff for himself and so on. And we work together with if he has homework or whatever it is. But I'm back out to work so I can deal with that. But at first, I, I couldn't even, I wanted to know if it was me, you know, with these two boys, you know, for, for those who have boys full of energy, yeah. Okay. okay, thanks for that bit. Tanison, do you want to jump in here and let us know about your two girls? Oh my, she created like all of the moms, moms and dads said it was Our kids are already accustomed to structure when it comes to that. They get up and fix, they're ready and at by the time they they're out of the house and they spend most of their time at, at school. Now that they're home, it has been like a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> they are at going at each other, they're back and forth, and it's hectic because as a parent, we have installed morals into our kids, but to deal with them on a on a 24 hour basis. I mean, we weren't built for that. <laughs> they are fighting. I have to separate them. I have to give each one of them their own gadgets so they can do their schoolwork so that they can find interesting things and educational things to do. In the meantime, they're apart because they are fighting. And um, for me, when they're at school, that was my time for myself. Yeah. I will get to sleep long, get to soak my feet in the water or stuff. But now I have to spend a whole day shout Anissa and, me, and, and, and Tanasia to stay quiet. Don't keep noise. It's, it's hectic, but I'm still thankful for having them around and to be able to spend some quality time with them because um, most of the time they're at school. So when they get home, they're already tired and then it's, it's dinner and then school work and then it's bed. So... Um, never mind, I'm complaining as a parent. I'm still thankful for the time that we can create memories even in this time. And I, as one of the parents said, I'm now getting to learn the things that my kids find interesting. Like my big daughter, I had no idea, even though we're very close, that she likes photography. And now I have gotten to know that she likes that. So it's something that she would like to pursue. So as a parent, I will support that. So I'm still thankful for the time that we have with them. Yeah. But school is hoping back fast. <laughs> okay so you like you would have mentioned that you have a daughter but now you're fostering a boy so yes. what has that experience been i mean you had just your daughter right yes. prior to the pandemic so now you're fostering a boy what is that like for you ah uh, that is it's a whole new experience for me fostering a boy i mean i would have my nephews from time to time they're way they're older than he is but to mm -hmm. actually have him here 24 7 the energy i have to speak over and over and over again don't trouble this put this down let's do this so it's kind of like i have to be back at the stage in looking always looking with my daughter i we already have our schedule so we do things as a routine in the house. She would wake up, we we watch a cartoon and then we have breakfast and then we do schoolwork. But for him, coming into this household and, and going into our actual schedule, I have to speak over and over and over. Just like the other parents, you have to be more on your guard now because remember he's smaller and he would trouble stuff that I wouldn't have my daughter troubling before. So. I am now no longer, you know, working and studying. I'm, I'm a security guard because I have to know <laughs> that he's not going to trouble something, you know, that might make him ill or, or injure him in the house. So I kind of have to put away everything for him. So it's, it's hectic oh. like the other parents. I'm actually studying because I'm studying from UG online and working and looking after the kids it is hard as a as a parent right now yeah yes mm -hmm. i can only imagine and i think this is something we can all acknowledge that's common here is our lives has all been altered right i'm saying our i don't have a child but i i empathize with you guys <laughs> right <laughs> So like your lives, you know, it's all been altered. Um, 
what was a regular schedule has now been changed and you have to now adapt to that. And I'm sure that there are some parents who out there, someone might be looking at this that might be struggling. Um, I just want, we just want you to know that you're not alone. All of us are in it and parenting doesn't come with a manual. Yeah. It doesn't come with a manual. So you make mistakes, but at the end of the day, you must strive to be the best parent possible. So like I mentioned just now, parenting doesn't come with a manual. So um, in the first question, uh, question, the second question kind of um, came out that you guys are, are facing some challenges, you know, it's different. And that in itself is a challenge. So mm -hmm. apart from the schedule, the, um, apart from the schedule being thrown out, what are some other challenges that you guys are facing during this time? For me, I would say it's trying to keep my kids mentally stable because they, they aren't accustomed to being um, at home for that that long period so finding activities for them to do throughout that entire time period it's very challenging like um sometimes they would ask questions why do they have to be at home why can't we go out some persons are out why we can't do like them so that part is to keep them mentally stable to understand the importance of being at home and for them not to, in the meanwhile, being at home to fall into depression or be depressed of not being around with their peer, with their peers, not being able to, like for instance, my small daughter, she's a hugger. So her cousin came over and she wanted to hug him, but I had to explain to her that hugging is not something that we will be doing for a long time. And she was sad. So she then asked me if it's because um, I don't like her cousin, like I don't want her to him but i had to go in there now because she went into the whole, this whole sad mode to explain to her that hugging him would put not just you in danger but him in danger because kids can carry the covid19 virus on them and we as parents we might not know so to protect grandma and grandpa we have to end the hugging process so to keep them mentally stable and to help them understand the effects that come from COVID-19 is a challenge because like I said, they're accustomed to being outdoors. They're accustomed to being with their friends. They're accustomed to all the joyous moments. For them to be at home now can be very challenging and it can be telling on their mental state right now. So that's my challenge. Um, I have, I don't think at first it was like that, like for the uh, Shaquan, because he's older, so he kind of understood, but at the same time, it got kind of frustrating for him because he's accustomed to hockey after school, all these other extracurricular activities after, sorry, all these other extra activities after school. And at one time he was sitting and I, I was looking at him and he was like, I can't take this anymore. I can't take it anymore. Um, um, it's not does not understand the reason for not going outside but um he's still a child at the end of the day and you know for him to be in this thing for me it's for me it's new i had to adapt i'm not accustomed to this i've never been in a in, in an area where they've ever had a pandemic and you had to stay in it's different if, it, if you know you could have still gone outside to do your normal stuff but to be in and be in the home you know for me was kind of, you know, I, I'm accustomed to this. I, I got things to do. Now you have to stay at home. So for him, um, for him to adjust it, it took some time. I had to at one time allow him to do the things that he liked because what was not, what was working for me wasn't working for him. And you would, a lot of times you would find that we were getting into little conflicts because, you know, I accustomed, I am accustomed doing things this way and he got accustomed, you know, so at one time we were, you know, jamming and, and we would have a little conversation about it. But um, it, it, it so came that I had to allow him at one time to just, if it's a tablet you want to look at, if it's something to just cool and calm you down, fine. That's it. Just do what it, what it is because um, I don't know, you know, this is all new. We had to come up with, with planned act, um, stuff for him to do. There's nothing that he can do much in here other than if I ask him to like wash some wares and sometimes that can always be a problem. You know? <laughs> Mommy, I'm not this and, and he would 
just help me, please. Just wash the, the one cup and the one plate and whatever, and, and you know, but I am not angry at him. I can understand he's a child. I had my play days too. Um, I, it was never in a pandemic, so I can understand what he's going through right now. So sometimes I would try to be a little lenient with him. For the smaller one, he's at his grandma. So that it's really, really strict there because they have two, um, his older, his grandparents, his great grandparents, one of them has um, severe chronic illness. So it's no coming in and going out and so on. They have their tablets, and if you give it to them, they, you know, they would sit for a while, but he's fine. But for Shaquan, I thought it was a bit challenging, and I, I got a little worried at the time. Yeah. Well, um, for my girls, you know, um, for them, they're, they're very outgoing. So um, most of the time, in before the pandemic, they would leave, um, at least with Sarah, she would leave at five in the morning because she would have um, swimming practice. And so she don't be back at home until probably 8.30, quarter to nine. All right, so most of the time, if she's out there. Um, Ashley, same thing, she, she doesn't go to training in the morning, but she, she gets some same time with Sarah. And so by the time they get home, you know, it's just for dinner, look over the schoolwork sometimes and then bed. Um, but with this pandemic and the challenges is that um, they couldn't really do any um, practice. But for the first two weeks, what I did was to um, send them by the coach who wasn't living far away from us. And they were doing training there, not in any enclosed area but they were on the road running so most of the energy was coming off there right and then they would come back um but some of the other challenges that i had with them also was you know because you know school is out i could get up anytime or go in my bed anytime you know i mean as a parent who's working i mean you're tired you want to go in your bed but then at the same time you cannot go in your bed and leave them unattended all right so um at one point, I had to be taken taken away the the computer charger. Well, the, co the computer doesn't have a battery, so it cannot work without the charger. So I had to take away the charger. I had to put the charger, the phone, and the tablet in my room. But um, the energy is still there. They up. Sometimes you get up, and the light is still on in the room, or the giggling, the, the disturbing the big sister from sleeping, <laughs> you know. Um, but at some point too, I had to stop all the training completely outdoors and I had them doing it in the yard. And so because they're not with the other peers, you know, they don't want to do it. Um, they, they just lay around, you know, and um, now the energy now start building again. So when they're in the house, is screaming, hollering, fighting, pulling, tugging. You know, and, and like you let said, you got to constantly talking, 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 talking. So I guess that's all we can do. Speak and speak as much as possible, you know, and um, hope for us as parents, we, our mental health is intact after this, you know? Yeah. It's draining, it's draining. So for me, Chiquita, um, I think for me, the reinforcement of, of telling them, okay, let's wash our hands every time we go outside, we come back in. That is the thing for me, keeping them, you know, with the precautions of COVID, having them wear their masks if they would go on the road, because I have like an open space in my yard and the road is, is not so busy. So I would allow them to go on the road to play because of course we can't keep them in the house all the time. So I, I allow them to go out, but I say when you're going out, ensure that you wash your hands. So the constant reminder of washing your hands was something that I had to deal with every day. I say, come on, wash your hands, use the soap. And then I had, remember now, I, I'm now experiencing parenting a boy. So now I have to say, uh, well, Zoriel, don't, when you go and you play with your ball, ensure when you come back in, you bring your stuff, pack back your stuff. I'm into basic school. I feel like a teacher myself. I have to be on them 
discipline. I have to be on them in keeping the place tidy. You have to be on them in ensuring that they eat and they pack up their wear. So that's kind of hard. Just the, the reminders is, is what is, you know, very hectic for me. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. And, you know, there are other parents out there who might be having similar or more issues, but like Kavita would have rightfully mentioned is that at the end of the day, like, how do you come out of this as a parent and how does your children come out of this? And basically that is what we're trying to address here. Parenting in the pandemic means that you as a parent, you're responsible for your wellness, your mental wellness, and we're also responsible for that of our children. So we have to come and we have we notice I, I keep saying what we have, we have. <laughs> I notice the parents, <laughs> parents here, they have multiple children, two children, three children. And so consider having to parent two and three children and also take care of your self so that i know can be challenging so how do you combat these challenges though because i know that i'm looking at a group of resilient women i know that i'm looking at a group of mothers who mother with care who mother who parent with love and who does not abuse their children i hope i'm correct <laughs> and so <laughs> yes and so how do you how do you combat these challenges. I'm going to start with you, um, Kavita. How do you deal with children's lack of motivation during this time? Well, for me, um, you know, it's just as a parent, you have to be consistent in terms of, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you keep telling them this is what you want, you will have to work towards this. All right. So like, for instance, I'm going back to, to school. You know, um, because work, uh, work via WhatsApp is coming, right? And uh, it's only one phone being used for both of them, Sarah and Ashley. And so um, I have to be constantly asking, did you do your project? Is it finished? Is it completed? Is it sent? You know, but at the same time, you know, the interest is not there because they're not in a classroom setting. All right. So as a parent, you gotta be constantly being on top of, of them being, you know, finishing their work, completing it. Um, some of the things we need to do is also, you know, just have a normal conversation with them. You know, just don't, don't always be rowing, 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 fretting, fretting, fretting. I could be like that at times, but then at the same time, I need to, remind myself that I need to pull back and, um, you know, calm myself down and then push forward. Because um, at the end of this, when school reopens, you know, you don't, as a parent, you don't want your child move from top to bottom. You want to be them going forward, you know, you want to, so that you have to encourage them. You have to keep um, being with, sitting with them and, and have them doing their work. You have to, for, them, for my children, I have to constantly say, you really want to go back to swimming after this? Then if you need, if you want that, then you need to do some, some exercise because you cannot sit down and expect to be at a stage um, when all of this is over with. All right. So it's just, I guess it's just having a conversation with them and, and letting them understand what are the consequences if you don't do these things, if you don't do your schoolwork, you will fall back. If you don't do your exercise, you will fall back. All right. So it's just basically encouraging them. So, Lisa, I noticed you mentioned a little bit about Shaquan's, you know, behavior, you know, and what's not. So how do, um, maybe him not wanting to do chores or assistance with because he also is going through um and feeling the anxiety that the pandemic brings, right? So how do you combat that? What do you do? How, when he doesn't want to follow instructions or if he doesn't listen to you, what do you do? Just look at him with my face. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Not the bug mark at all. Yeah. <laughs> Um, honestly, I do that. I just look at him with my face and he knows that he has to move. He would kind of give, you know, but um, in the afternoon when he normally comes home from school, he knows that he has certain things that he has to do. So, you know, um, whatever it is, either he takes a turn, I take a turn or whatever, because it's just us. Um, I'm working uh, during the day and uh, for him, for me to say, all right, I'm going to work. When I come back, I don't want to see this. Sweep the front, for example. Sometimes you go to work and then you, you come home and it's not done. It upsets me because yeah. not, I, I mean, I have you here, but I have to go out there. I'm risking my life for you. I'm supposed to be at home, you know, and... I mean, I can understand on his part, but what I'm doing is for you to sacrifice. So at least do your part and I'll do mine. You know, I, I, I am in the healthcare system, but as it is now, I'm not there. So I'm among people. I have to deal with people. So it's hard. And every day, sometimes, you know, you would, I'm lying on my bed sometimes and I'm like, you know, I have, I don't know what more to do, not with him, but for me, it's like, how do you deal with this? How, you know, it, it becomes frustrating. So when mm -hmm. he doesn't comply, I get angry, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. I, I say nothing, I do nothing and, and these things. So I think he kind of gets that and, you know, he's trying to pull himself a little together, but mm -hmm. I can understand that his part is not that hard. But it's it's really really challenging. Okay, yeah. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yolette. Okay, so for me, I have three things that I do with them now. When it's really hectic and it's a whole lot to deal with, I I give them a bargaining system I have with them. So I say, if you want to have a certain amount of time on your tablet, you have to do what I'm telling you to do, or I would ask you to do what I'm telling you. If you don't, I reduce the amount of time that you're gonna spend on the tablet or watch television or even play in the yard. For the boy, I have a little um sticker. I have some stickers at home. So if he does something good, I would give him a sticker. I say, okay, you did something good. I didn't have to argue with you today. I'm gonna give you a sticker. So I'm kind of introducing this reward system. If you do something good, I give you a reward. And I'm actually using the eye as well. So Delicia is not the only person. If he's not listening, I would normally give him the stare. I'm like, and then he's like, okay, okay, I'm gonna hear, I'm gonna listen. <laughs> so the stare does work. And I take a moment for myself. Some days it can be really, really hectic and you can become really emotional as a parent, especially if you're trying to encourage them when it comes to schoolwork. So my daughter is about to write common entrance and I'm at her. And some days I would be frustrated knowing that she doesn't want to put in the extra work. So I take a moment, I, I, I am honestly telling you ladies, I take a moment for myself, I go into my room because I feel my passion and you know the anger inside of me. I'm like, I'm gonna take a moment, breathe, I walk away and then I come out back and I give her the stare. So for parents that are feeling really, really frustrated, take a moment because sometimes your children lead you into a way that you might want to beat them or you might want to abuse them because you're at home and a lot of things is on your mind emotionally take walk away it is fine for us to walk away i feel fine walking away from them i know they're not in danger they're in the house i go into the other room take some breaths and then i come out back and prepare myself for it again well for me um that has been a challenge because for the first two weeks i was an emotional wreck like I, I could remember one time I sat in the chair and starting to cry and cry and cry because I was so exhausted with the screaming and, and hollering at them. And I was like really, really harsh sometimes with my tone. And one day I had to be like, this is not me. We have to find another, I have to find as a parent another system to use 
so that we both will achieve what we have to get. So what I did is that since they're at home all the time, I would have to go to the supermarket sometimes. So I used the doing the schoolwork, washing the dishes and washing the clothes. In order you do these things, you get to go to meet with the supermarket and you get the goodie. And <laughs> you are allowed to pick up the most is $1,500 in goodies. And we're going to home back because you know they're at home. So they can't go out as they feel like. So yep. I had to install that system in order to get my six-year-old up at the latest seven o'clock to get ready for her 10 o'clock classes, to get my 13-year-old up by nine. Yes, to get my 13-year-old up by nine so that she can get to do her classes also because, uh, like I said, it's it's hectic and it's frustrating and you have to be screaming and shouting and we're not accustomed to doing this. So we ha I had to invent methods in a way that at the end of the day, both of us achieve what we have to get with a positive, by a positive way and not a negative way of them feeling that, you know, I have to scream at them for everything. So they get accustomed to people, people yelling at them. So I had to pull back, tone down and find a way that we both can accomplish stuff. Yeah. I know that this is a period that parents can become very frustrated because again, like I mentioned earlier, you're dealing with your fears, your anxiety, and also that of your children. And I really love the fact that um, Yolette would have brought out that parents can become so angry that they want to hit their children. And any form of hitting is physical abuse. Like, you know, they, they, they resort to physical abusing their children and Another thing is different children will have different personalities. So you might have two children that are two completely different individuals that you have to deal with on both sides. You don't want to mention anything on that because I noticed you're nodding, heavily in agreement. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, with my daughter, she was she's an only child she's normally here alone you know unless i send her over to my mother's house where all the other children would be so now he's here my daughter has become you know outspoken she to me she's bullying him she's taking this time now all the attitudes that i didn't see before when it comes to her communicating with other children i am actually seeing it now it's evident now and he's a more soft kind of child he's more quiet I'm thinking because he's small as well so I hear I have one that you know the temper would raise and then you have another child that is quieter it clashes and that's where we have the fights <laughs> yeah I can only imagine I can only imagine I'm not a parent as yet but I have a, I'm a 21 year old sister and I feel like her mother sometimes <laughs> 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 So, and, and the state that you mentioned, you know, it's, it's important that we have a system with our children where we can really, um, like, you know, discuss, where we have an exchange. It's important that we have dialogue. So that way we can get them to understand what it is that we're dealing with and how they can assist us. So I would often say that, I can remember saying this to my cousin, instead of making your child feel as though, you know, um, you have to do what I say, give him or her a responsibility and make them feel with regards to making them feel as a part of cure, I would call it. So you know what? By you staying home and doing what you have to do, it will make the time easier to pass by. You might not um, contract, you, you will not pick up any virus. I know that you will become frustrated, but when you become frustrated, this do that and this is how you're helping out the situation by making them feel a part of something i believe it makes children feel as though they're a part of a bigger picture it makes them feel as though they have a role and a responsibility and they will want to hold up to that end but at the end of the day a child is a child and a child will be a child they will do things that children will do but like you had mentioned if by any chance we become frustrated or so Take a breath, walk away, and then come back. Because all sorts of issues like Delisa would have mentioned, you will see coming out. You will learn things about your children you didn't even know. You know, and so you have to deal with understanding them and vice versa. 
just like you're around them for 24 hours for most parents they're around you for 24 hours and maybe that's something right. that they're not accustomed to either so it will take time for them to to adjust so something i saw someone mention in a comment in the comment section is that they can only imagine what it was like for teachers so <laughs> yeah yes so while teachers play their roles, parents play their roles, and at the end of the day, we all have the responsibility to safeguard, to protect, and to ensure that each and every child in Guyana and in the world by extension meets their full potential. Good. So something that I want to ask you guys is, have you guys been practicing any kind of self-care? No. If um for me, <laughs> my self care time starts at, at nine in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I I think this time to sit when the children is, the children are sleeping. Everybody the place is quiet. I think this time I I would do my nails. I think this time to eat ice cream <laughs> when they're not there. So you have to take that time. Definitely, I encourage parents when at that most quiet time of the day, whether it's the day when they're sleeping in the day or in the evening when everybody's asleep, the kids are asleep, take that time, fix your hair. Because some of us don't even take time. We're at home and we don't even want to comb our hair. <laughs> we That's don't want to wear something nice. We probably don't even want to put up you know, put on makeup. I mean, nobody's looking, but that's the time where you tap into self. So I did my toenails the other day. I gave myself a pedicure. And that was, I felt relieved. Just like, okay, I don't have to go far. Or I'm not out in the open, but I'm just at home in this little quiet moment. And I'm able to look after my body and look after myself as a woman. Okay, so let me say for the persons who might looking at this, but I might not be sure what we're talking about. So I just asked the parents if they practice any type of self-care. And here we have um, self-care is any activity that we do deliberately in order to take care of our mental, emotional, physical health. Now, um, good self-care is important in parenting and it's something that every parent should practice. So it's something that parents we do to take care of our mental, physical, and emotional health. So next person, do you practice any self-care, Kavita? Ah, well, you know me, Shaquita, we work together. You know, I always say that I don't do self-care. But um, for the period that I've been home during this pandemic, um, and I think just before it started, I started to make an effort to free my skin because <laughs> literally yes I would rush out of this house without having breakfast or even creamy skin and Shikita knows when we get to the house oh my god look at your foot white <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> and so um as she knows we have a little bottle of coconut oil I decided in the window <laughs> where we would cream but um, that is something that I'm trying to do now, um, one thing. And then um, a colleague of mine, Shikrita, would have gifted me this beautiful um, uh, diffuser or diffuser. And so um, I, I haven't been using it as much as I want to, but I do use it. And that is what uh, relaxes me because um, nice sometimes me and the girls would, you know, even though it's my self care, I think it's self care, self care for them as well. We would lie down in the dark, and the light would glow, and the smell, and so on. So, um, I've been trying a little bit, yes. As well, too, you know, for me, um, my quiet moments are like in the evenings. I, I'm sitting watching television most of the time. I'm not seeing, but it's my quiet moment where you know you sit and you reflect on your day. Um, if you were, okay. if I'm at work, if I was at work during the day, mm -hmm. then I reflect what I did or um, <clears throat> if I'm working from home, you know, you know, and that's my quiet moment, but I'm literally not seeing the television. So that's me. Right. 
Well, for me, my self-care moments will be on Saturdays because I'm not fortunate like um, Kavita would say her, her time and Miss Yannick that are in the evenings, but my six-year-old don't sleep until I sleep. So I don't get even an alone time in the night. <laughs> so mine would be, um, and Shigrita would know I really, really love music. Music is something really soothing for me. So what I would do is on Saturdays, I would send them over to their grandma, who's like six feet away from us, to stay from eight to one. My little daughter, she would go over because, you know, within the time, I spot on my music so hard. And I would dance around the house and do my little work. And I would dance like kind of disco, sometimes soco, reggae, soul. And I would sing with, I just think my neighbors just think that is going crazy because I be on the top of my voice. But um, that's relaxing for me. And at the end of it, I achieve, I not only get to clean, but um, I feel good and I feel accomplished and I feel so loved and so everything because music does a lot for you. Music is my thing. I, I, I just obsessed with music. So I take that, that four hours and I just indulge in music and that helps me so much. At the end of it, I have a nice shower and you girl just sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that, that's the time that I get. It, it's on Saturday. So that's my self caring moments. Yeah. So, Delisa, do you do anything? I, I noticed you sh you shake your head when I asked the question initially, but do you practice any form of self care? At first, I was I was sleeping a lot, like I wasn't getting any sleep at all. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I decided I was following some girls on Facebook who had these lovely scrubs, and this so I decided to purchase one. I did that for one day. And I have the bottle outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really hot and I said, yes, you know, I can do this thing and I can scrub down and, and you know, and take care of myself nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. I started huh? work. I can't even remember. It's been a month since I went out back. And I can't even remember when I, I last I washed my hair. Yeah. Because I'm oh so busy. <laughs> and this is the truth. I'm so busy yeah. doing it from yeah. 11 to 8 and then the time there that you do, you, whatever it is that you have to do. And then when I get home at 8 o'clock, I just go straight, you know, you do whatever it is and then you have to go into your bed and then tomorrow again and then you still have to study and, and all these other different things. So at first, yes, I was trying to do something, but now I think I slip back a little, as they say, you know, when they, uh, your back slides. Yeah, I must be back slid a little. I don't know. <laughs> and I think it's normal and I like that Delisa is actually being real because that's the reality that we're faced with. Sometimes mothers don't even find time to do anything for themselves. And, you know, tomorrow we will be having a conversation with our um, parent, uh, parenting education, parenting skill educator, it's um, Stacey Paris. She we will be having a part two um, of our discussion in parenting and mental health and these things. And so there is where you can reference some ways in which you can go about self-care. And yeah. I must say that it doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to go to the spa or get a massage. Like Tannison said, she would play music and dance around. And for her, that's relaxing. She would sleep. Vita would listen um, with her oil diffuser and share the moment with her daughters, but it's still her partaking in yep. self-care yep. because it's relaxing. Lisa did the face scrub, and these are simple things that makes us feel happy. Make yeah. parents, yeah. I don't know why I keep saying us and we. Children <laughs> <laughs> love, you know, it makes, it makes you feel about yourself and so it improves your emotional health and that's necessary in parenting because you can only pour out what's within and if you're not happy then how are you going to make your children happy or your family by extension yeah. you know and there are some parents who might say um oh my my day is so pressed or so but you know waking up a little early just to take some time and reflect 
a little introspection 20 minutes before the time that you usually wake up. I saw someone um, in the comments mentioned earlier, um, Madonna, she said, get them to do projects, maybe start a, um, a garden. And, and that's something that you can do for self-care, start a, a little kitchen garden for the parents who might have the little extra time in their hands, you know, and it's something that yeah. brings forth. Yeah. I, 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 just want, I just want to say, sorry, Shikrita, but I just want to say, it's not that um, for self-care, since you're on the topic, it's not your children or it's not the, you know, the situation, the, um, the situation that's in the home that is not making you do these things, but because of time and because i mean yeah. it's, it's you know time goes so fast so by the time you even say you know what i'm gonna do this something end up happening yeah. you know you yeah. don't care yeah. yeah you know I'm, I, I agree with um delicia but what i can add or advise her and other parents and it's something i'm trying on my own i know time is pressing for the parents i have to go out to work so <laughs> Shikrita is advising that you wake up a little earlier. Why you self-care is so simple. You can take a longer bath. If time, you don't have time to probably read a book, you don't have time to watch a movie, eat something, play music, take a longer bath with self. You know, talk to yourself, look after yourself in the bathroom. So you are actually prepping your body and your spirits and your mind mentally for whatever the day is going to bring. So yeah. take that time in the show just to throw an extra bullet, as we would say in Guyana. Stay longer in the show and take that moment just to feel and enjoy life. Because if we don't know how long COVID would be. We, we can honestly say, as a people, we can't say how long we would be indoors. So enjoy indoor, even if it's in the shower, by yourself. No children, nobody to disturb you. Yeah. And you let we could probably throw in some um some squats in the bathroom as well too, you know? <laughs> Whatever makes you, women, we have to be honest, it's women, we don't have that time a lot of times for self. We do not get it. Because we have to look after the children, we have to look after a spouse, we have to look after work or yep. even the home. So yep. even in that moment in the shower, if you would normally take 15 minutes, take 20. You are 25 as a woman. Yeah. You get that time just to breathe and be you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I I'm, I'm not a morning person. So they have morning persons and I have evening persons. So I find that the evenings are where I mostly would do my um, little bit of self care, you know. So, and some people who are morning can probably do a bathroom stuff. So I, I guess it's on the individual themselves. You got to find out what would work for you and yeah. try to work with, with that. Yeah, I agree with Kavita. We have to tap into our inner self. There's something there yeah. that brings us pleasure and joy, but we just have to tap in and we can take this time to find out what it is. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and let's not be biased because there are single fathers and there are fathers also who need... Yeah practice self-care who needs to take care of themselves and I'm very sad that I don't actually have a father here as a guest with me today but one of the reasons that we at Childlink did this is because we want real parents to discuss the real issues you know you can always sit and have a chat with a professional which we will do tomorrow but hearing it from the horse's mouth as we would say in Guyana is very important in persons realizing that you know what this is me these are the challenges that i'm facing you know they're grassroots parents parents who are not even able to be a part of this conversation because they don't have internet you know how do they practice self-care you know so it's important that as even as mothers and parents we pick up the mantle and advise parents you know yeah. say girl what have you been doing to feel better, this this pandemic is stressing us out. What have you been doing? I would suggest you do this. So it doesn't have to always be us um, or, you know, some entity sitting or say, an, or an organization sitting and saying, you know, let's practice self, this is how you do it. But you can 
advise your friends. The Lisa can go and have conversation with the nurses, you know. Later you can have a conversation with your friends. So that is important. Someone tune into this live right now can have a conversation, say, you know, self-care is important in parenting. You know, some parents completely let themselves go. And especially now that we're in a pandemic where there's more anxiety, where there's fear, there's uncertainty, there is stress, there's a need for this because there are some people, unfortunately, who are going to come out of this very mentally spent. They don't have anything left to give. So we have to take care of ourselves. You cannot pour from an empty vessel. You cannot pour from an empty vessel. So self-care is key. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention, Yolette? Because I know Yolette also works at Childing as a family counselor. So, you know, she might be able to give us some more professional insight with regards so, to handling so what um, I did. your anxiety as long as that, as well as that of your children. So I'm going to give you like, the opportunity to speak about this briefly first, and then I'm going to give the other parents, if that's okay, an opportunity to really talk about what, what are some of the anxieties that they have with the parent, or should I do it the other way around? You guys you'll probably allow the other parents let's let's have the other parents talk about it and then i can probably give my professional input as well as my yes, personal that's input. perfectly fine so i know that and this is something that you guys would have mentioned that you have all had your own fears and anxiety regarding this pandemic you delisa said you're on your like what am i supposed to do i'm home like um I have to go to work in this pandemic, your essential service, uh, while others get to stay home. Like, how have you been dealing with your anxiety and, and also that of Shaquan and your son, your um, your other child? At first, I was, at first, I was really, really scared because I, I nobody was coming here because I was at home for like two weeks or, or so. Nobody wasn't coming here. I mopping, cleaning like crazy, doing everything like crazy, washing every two days, trying. You know, I was really, really doing a lot. And then it really, really hit me that, and apart from doing that, you're trying to look at movies, you're trying to do reading, and I can't study. I could not study because, I'm, you know, my, my sister, she's overseas, and she would call and she would like, she was scared. The Lisa, don't want you to do it. Don't want you doing that because I can't lose you. You know, I can't. You know, if anything happened, I can't come and see you. This it. And and apart from that, she was more afraid for the children because you know this is this was all new. But then it really really hit me that you know what I am a believer and this is something has something good has to come out of this. I'm at home for a reason. Yep. From the time Shaquan was in primary school, from the time he was in nursery school to, this is my personal experience, from the time he was in nursery school to the time he hit first farm, it has just been work, home, school, work, home, school, work, home, school. So I just come to a point where I, I'm like, you know what? This has to, you have to learn something from this. Because who can do it? You know, there's the reality. I, I am not going to go mad because of this. I'm going to follow the precautions. I'm going to teach my children that this is what we have to do. It's, and we uh, freezing a bit. So I just stopped taking it on. I stopped looking at Facebook with all these things coming up every minute, you know, and I try try to do some things different follow the precautions and we're still here by the grace of god we're here so that's what i did oh yes D delicia i must say heartfelt thanks for what you're doing because you're a nurse and um we really appreciate what you guys are doing because you're there on the front line safeguarding for us and ensuring that everything goes well so i must say thank you um, for me, Shikwita, what was difficult is that, uh, as you know, I'm a part of many organizations, and while visiting a home, um, I noticed the, the mom, she had some marks on her skin, and so 
And um, we started talking to her and we realized that, you know, from analyzing the situation, that she's being abused at home, domestic. And um, there it hit me that persons are locked at home. They can't get out. They can't do anything. And their kids who might be um, with their abusers at home, um, they're yes. victims of domestic abuse who will be at home and they have no way of, of getting to safe grounds or they have no way of talking to persons because some of sometimes um, you guys would go out in the fields and you would reach persons and stuff, but now there's a limit to going out. We have to be home. So um, that afternoon I came home and it was very depressing for me that I even started crying now thinking, how are these people coping? What are they doing? Are they getting to talk to anyone? Are they getting any help? What will the mental state be? And that was a challenge and it, it was very sad for me at that time. But then um, I reached out to a few friends and we decided that at least twice a, a, a month or so, we would try to visit who we know, but not just visiting, but following the necessary precautions like having our mask, or hand sanitizers and stuff and try to even have a little chit chat with them and let them know that they're not, you know, in this alone, that there's still people out there who would want to help them and want to ensure that they're safe. So um, don't just stay and stay closed in and um, be abused and stuff. So with the whole pandemic stuff, that is what has been frightening to me is to know that there are persons who are at home suffering mentally and physically. Yep. Not only um for me i there there are persons who um who are out there who are out of a job who don't have an income coming in um i would usually help my mother-in-law downstairs when i come from work in the afternoon she has a little breeze we stand and it hit me one day while I was there that um, I was I was helping her sell, and then they had this family who was who was shopping, and they were um, saying, you know, put this in a different bag, put that in a different bag, you know. I was wondering why they want so much of bags, right? But then at the end of it, I, I gathered, I understood that they were shopping for somebody because the wife was telling the husband, oh, don't buy cabbage because I don't think her children eat cabbage. And that's when it really hit home that we have a lot, a lot of parents out there, uh, a lot of people out there who are out of a job, who have children, who are suffering, who, who don't know where the next meal coming from. And, you know, um, to those persons out there, I, I, I would encourage you to reach out to somebody. Um, everyone can't know what's happening internally, but if you say something, then you can get help. Say something ask for help. Don't put pride in, in front of anything, especially when you have children, you know, because they're the ones who suffer the most. We as adults can bear our hunger, but children cannot, you know, and um, just go there, just, just speak to somebody, say something, you know. Uh, it's, it's a really, really hard time in this moment. Even us who have children at home, they're home, they're eating more than, more than usual, you know, you have your bills still to pay, you know, it, it's a fearful moment for each and every one of us because at the end of this, we don't know what will happen. We don't know how long this will prolong for. That's the first thing. And so um, some of us are in better position than others. And I think if we can help somebody, then we should at some point. Yeah, I agree. Bayelet, can you share with us some ways in which... Um, Parents can handle both their and their children's anxiety because there are a lot of situations outlined by the ladies and truth is that's the reality which with, with which we are faced. And so we are, there are parents who are scared and you know, you're, you're anxious, but still you have to remain hopeful for both yourself and for your children. So what would you say to those parents? So I would first, you know, first I want to, why I was moving around because I was trying to get my book to share with the viewers. I know we're actually live and we might have persons, you know, suffering or are in homes where domestic violence is prevalent, right? So I wanted to share 
help and shelter number for persons who are worried, who are scared, who are being abused. I, I would like to share that with, with you know, the viewers. So in the event of you being abused at home, you can reach out to Help and Shelter. Their contact number is 227-3454. You can also call 225-4731, or you can call 227-8353. Because it is a fact that we have a lot of persons locked in and they are being abused. We cannot ever you know, do away with that idea or the facts. For the parents, in terms of anxiety on a professional basis, I would advise you that you create schedules. Now, we know as parents, a lot of times we do not think about self. Our focus is about everybody else around us. That includes our children, that includes our spouse, it includes our family members in Guyana as well as abroad. So to keep your mind occupied, I say read a book limit your social media time we have persons online and because of the influx of information it is actually building up the anxiety in persons because every day we will see something new either the number is higher or the death rate is higher or casualties or persons not even adhering to the to the precautions that in itself can frustrate somebody at home knowing that you're the one keeping your family safe and then for your family members that are going out here comes a reckless person not thinking about covid not thinking about the consequences and can actually come into contact with your family so limit the amount of information that you are actually feeding yourself I'm not saying to do away and not look at the, the precautions or look at the headlines in terms of numbers. But if you give yourself within two hours or an hour and a half online or just checking up the news, that's fine. But try not to depress yourself when it comes to the, in, the influx of information and from the different medias that it comes from. Mm -hmm. As well, yeah. I would say, take, do something that you love create a hobby if you are not a planter if you're not a person that is up to read a book you can actually listen to music so listen to music you can do a simple practice as, as deep breathing so deep breathing helps with in terms of anxiety because the mind as well as the heart as well as the blood is pumping because of the thoughts flowing in your mind you find that you become frustrated or the body becomes fatigued so the breathing helps you to soothe the body soothe the thoughts most importantly i would advise viewers as well as the panel to pray there's nothing we can do nothing without god at this time Nothing we can do without God. So we have to definitely tap into the Supreme Being and take that moment to pray not only for your family, but to pray for yourself, to pray for your mental health, and to pray for your frustration and your fears. So outside of creating a hobby, outside of praying, form conversations with family, keep in touch with family that you know is outside or you know family that are going out, meaning working families like, like Delicia, you are, a, you are a parent as well as you're one of our mental health, not mental health, but our health care givers. So I would say take that time to talk. You, you didn't communicate with before, family members you weren't in touch with, reach out to them. Send motivational words of advice. Send a little good morning. Hi, how are you? It helps. It goes a long way. Create that support that people would need and you would need yourself. Take yeah. time to talk. As parents, as a parent now, I would tell you, take this time to talk to your children. A lot of us, we didn't actually have time before COVID to talk to our children. What we would do, we would actually pass instructions. So you would say, okay, I'm home. You have to do this. You have to do that. I want you to do this. And we never took that time to listen. We never took the time to hear what, what are our children's views? What are their fears? What are some of the things they want to accomplish? It doesn't matter the age range of the child. You can sit and have a conversation with that child and take the time to practice the 28 rule, I would say, as a parent. 
20% of this time is for you to listen now. And 80% is for you to allow your children to speak. speak. So we have that time where we were the ones in charge and we took that time to pass instructions. But in the reverse, COVID has given us this time to listen, to observe, and to coach and support. So as I was telling you, I was practicing the reward system with the little boy that I have in my house and it's actually working. So as a parent, home now, I know some parents' finance is like the important thing now. You're really studying how to save as much in this time and you don't wanna spend a lot. So what you have, you can actually use what you have in your house. If you bake a cake, give your child an extra slice of cake okay you were really good today you have an extra slice of cake and you didn't even have to spend money to reward them with something expensive reward them with an extra time of an extra 50 minutes watching television so these little moments would help you to create bonds ties and show love in the home you don't need to go out of your budget to let them know you support whatever they did for the day or whatever good came out of the day. And I would say as a parent as well, even when your children are doing, when they're not listening, um, Delicio, or even when my, my little baby's not listening, I still say, okay, you didn't listen today, but I'm going to give you half of what I would have given you if you would have followed the instruction completely. So you still have that some amount of reward given to them. So they know, okay, the next time I, I'm going to want the entire thing. So I'm going to do better. We have this moment now as parents just to think about how fear can actually play with our physical being. Because we are fearful, we are anxious, and you find person's blood pressure raising. As a parent, your blood pressure high. A lot of parents say, oh gosh, these children, you know, they're raising my blood pressure in this house. So you really have to tap into sitting, relaxing, and doing simple practice. So for my kids that I have here, Friday nights, we are not going anywhere. Normally, you know, you could have taken them to the movie. We have a movie night right here. And for families that don't have a lot of income to say that you can buy a popcorn or you can bake a cake or you can make a pizza, you can fry some potato chips, plantain chips, whatever you have in the home and you sit and you have that moment with your family outside, no exp additional expenses. So we really want to create a lot of bonds and we really want to create that open environment for, uh, to learn about our children and have our children learn about us at the same time. Thanks for that, Yolanda. And I'm happy that you mentioned um, the information that we're, we have, have access to the internet as well. And just like our, just like us, our children can access those information too. Definitely. You know, and may experience a form of anxiety. So, um, or may become anxious. So we need to be careful. We need to, how we would say, think I and a tread light because it's mm -hmm. a very serious situation. And we want to ensure that when we come out of this, all parents and children are in the best mental state possible. Yeah. Because we still have to continue living after this pandemic. Like um, Delisa mentioned, um, it's just for a time. It's a it's, it's, there's something will come out of it. We'll learn something, but it will, and it will try us as parents. But we need to always take the high road and you do the positive things. Our children's well-being depends on us. Mm -hmm. We need to consider ourselves in the process because they are a product of us. They will act how we act. They will mirror our actions. How we parent, they will parent. So like almost grandparents would for the grandchild, <laughs> think about that grandchild in the process of parenting. Remember our children are all individuals and we must love them for their unique selves. You're frustrated, take a breather. Come back at the discipline thing. Discipline teach valuable lessons. Discipline teach accountability. Remind yourself this, discipline doesn't have to hurt. 
It doesn't hurt. It teaches lesson. It teach responsibility. It teach accountability. So you don't have to beat them. You don't have to always yell. It's, it will be difficult. There are times when you're going to raise your voice because that's the truth. Yep. But it doesn't always have to be what it is. So we got to be real. We're yep. dealing with parents here. Yep. Even I just, I'm 25 years old. And when I'm at my mother, I just get eyes to. I know that <laughs> you know, it's stupidness. Yeah. You know, you're doing something. Right? So it's been at least one hour and something, women. So we have to wrap it up. So I'm going to ask each, um, each of you, um, what advice would you give to parents that are parenting in this pandemic? final advice i would like to tell them not to take this moment for granted but this to take this moment is creating memories with their kids as yulet has said let's take the time to listen to our kids talk to them create conversation because out of this we will learn something great about our kids from them and to continue following the guidelines and practice the social distancing the sanitizing and the mask up so hats off um I would say you know just like everybody else would have said she would have said something good is going to come out of this just go easy don't you know don't rush if you don't feel like doing something today don't do it you know just take your time which when it comes to your children listen to them listen to them all the time, they ain't going to be telling you foolishness, you know? Take this time, ask them questions, you know, find out things. Even if you got to jot it down in a book, whatever it is, just take your time. Look at them. Look at them outside, inside, you know? These things I've not been doing but before, but now I am, you know? I'm looking to see what changes coming about, you know? And, and these different things, take your time. If they're not going anywhere, they're with you. As well as practice your social distancing and you follow the precautions and everything. Is fine. All right. Well, um, my advice to parents is that um, it is going to get, it is hectic, it is frustrating. You know, but we got to find it in ourselves, find some sort of way where how we can deal with these type of situations, um, what works for, for us the best, you know. Um, like the others would have said, we wouldn't get this time again with our children, you know. We have to use this time to bond, to create memories, like Tanison would have said. We got to use this time to understand who they are. We can use this time also to know what exactly they want to do, what are their future plans, what, what, what they're thinking, and help to guide them through this. You know, um, my girls, you know, you know Children are, are blessings. I, I asked somebody the other day, how can people, you know, see children as uh, as, a, as a disgust or, you know, as all sorts of things they would call children, but I don't know. I love my children. And as much as I might be shouting and going on, I think I do this because I want the best out of them. And any parent wants the best out of their children, you know. Yep. And so to parents out there, you know, just take this time. Listen. I mean, we might say things that we shouldn't say. It wouldn't hurt to apologize. You know, it wouldn't hurt to apologize. And so we should apologize if we know we're wrong and moved on. Um, <laughs> understanding the children having them have a have a conversation you know what i start doing as well i mean sir like cooking so we i would have her in the kitchen i would tell her to cut this cut of that and i was surprised the other day that i came home and had dinner i had macaroni and cheese and spanish rice <laughs> you know so 
I think it's just allowing them to do what they want and um and just guiding them just being there for them yeah. ash as well who is a trying to fry eggs as well too but you gotta watch her on the stove you know you gotta tell her well when you're not there you don't you don't use the soap so in all i think this is going to be the best time you will have with your children as much as i'm saying again that it would be frustrating mm -hmm. you know use it create memories be there for them, guide them, have conversation. And I think we will have, out of all of this, we'll have good. Yep. Yep. Well, I would like to advise parents to take a moment for yourself every day. Every day you need to take at least two hours because remember you need to re regenerate, you need to revive from the activities of the day. Despite that it is actually scheduled, meaning something that you do, it's routine, you're doing it day after day after day. Remember the mind will be tired as well as the body. So you first have to definitely take that time to look after yourself, even if it's an extra two hours or an hour of sleep to start the other day fresh and ready for whatever your children is going to bring in the home, take that time. I would advise parents to take the time to listen, to be patient. This time, if no other time, you have to be patient with your children because you cannot pass them over to a teacher. <laughs> no <laughs> teachers are here. <laughs> so take that time to love whoever your child is. Because your child might be the funny one, the loud one, the disgusting one, the quiet one, the sleepy one. Whatever characteristics your children display in this house, in the house, you would know that that is who they are. And that's what you have to love. And that's what you have to cope with. So take that time to understand what they bring to the table, as well as what you are willing to offer. Parents, we already know what we're offering, financial support, emotional support, but this is just a time where we have to enforce more so kind of words, hugs, because we know our children are, we would definitely say, you know, pay attention to the precautions, but then if we don't show love within the actual home and we give them a little hug, they're still going to long for that, their children at the end of the day. So we know we're keeping the precautions running in the house. We can still take that time to love them and to show it physically by a little small hug or even a kiss. They're at home. We're keeping them safe. We know if they're outdoors, we're telling them, do no hugging, no kissing, and these things with strangers. But we still have to reinforce that warmth, not only in words, but in actions, right? And I'm advising parents to take the time to pray take the time to talk to God and he's the only person that would be able to help us through this period of fear, this period of sadness, this period of depression for some people. Mm -hmm. He's the only person who's going to get us through it. So take that time to tap into whomever is your creator mm -hmm. and to listen. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Remember, this is a time that Vita rightfully said you might not get, you will not get back. You don't get to work from home and spend time with your children. This is not going to last forever. You know, spend time, learn about them more, love who they are. And loving who they are will teach them to love themselves and accept themselves. So as parents, you want to raise assertive, strong individuals. And should Have we dialogue with your we children. Go. Um, mm -hmm. I know I, we have a lot of parents that might not have access to the internet. So what I would advise you, and we have parents again, we have to be realistic. We have parents that do not have internet for the kids. They do not have a tablet that they can actually give their kids to utilize, you know, while we're doing the work at home. I would say go back to the natural things. Go back to the simpler things, like a simple board game where we used to use the corks, use activities in the home where you gather the cork and you drop your little chest board or your drop and you play it with your kids. So you might not have internet, but you can use other activities that we used before. So we could also, um, for those who parents who have internet, you know, um, most teachers are actually grouping the children in a group for, um, for work. So 
if those who have internet, you are, um, you can access, you can print the stuff out. And for those, and you know, somebody who doesn't have internet, I mean, we could share information like that, have it printed out yeah. and give it to them, you know? Um, yeah. In this time, we have to be for each other. And so, and like I said before, um, for those persons who may not have access to certain things, you just need to speak up a little bit, you know, just put pride aside, just speak to somebody and you will get help. Yeah. Yes. yes. And uh, we talk about uh, gender-based violence or a bit earlier, we briefly mentioned their mothers who are at home, who are, you know, parents who are at home, male and female, might be victims of gender-based violence or domestic violence. Um, you can call also um, Help and Shelter. They have their uh, toll-free hotline number, which is 0910. 0910. Um, you can just give them a call. I'll, I'll um, put the number in the comments and uh, share. You don't have to stay in that. So thank you, ladies, for joining me today. I really enjoyed this conversation. We went way over the time that we planned, <laughs> but it was indeed a very fruitful conversation. So I see the babies are ready for their mothers now. <laughs> so I must yeah. give them their mother. <laughs> I, just to say, I just want to say thank you to um to all our frontline, Delicia and all the other frontline workers, yeah, yes. you know, I also want to say thank you to our teachers, you know, they're still sending work via WhatsApp, via mm -hmm. the internet, you know, uh, Facebook, whatever, yes. um, trying to get our children to still be on top of their games. And um, for all the other persons who are doing a little here and there, you know, um, we may not know who they are, but we just want to say thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you, you Delisa. Thank you. Thank you. You've been... Okay, thank so you. guys, you can tune in tomorrow again, live with Child Link, um, which yeah. is Friday the 29th of May at 10 o'clock. Myself, along with our parenting uh, skills educator, will be live and she will be discussing self-care, parenting challenges. She will give more of a professional insight, you know, professional perspective on how you go about it, what to do, how, what not to do, what will work, what will not work. So remember to tune in at 10 o'clock tomorrow for another discussion with Miss Stacy Paris and I. So thank you for staying tuned, everyone who is looking. Thank you, ladies, once more so much for joining me. Again, this is a very informative program, and I really enjoyed having you as guests. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. You're welcome. You too. Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye.